Hey, I'm Kasim Adenian. You are watching Asia Motorsport Hour. Inometro Asia Motorsports Hour for the first time in 2021 brings you Asian superbike racing highlights. The All Japan Championship is up and sliding for its 54th season. Our featured rider is a young Malaysian with big ambitions and a competitive nature. We, we like to fight, by clean fight actually. In training, yes, we don't have a clean fight. And Capri Malaysia provides an elbow controversy at Sepang. Kazma Daniel Kazmaudin, one of the most talked about talents in Southeast Asia, was born in Johor in the south of Malaysia. As a teenager, he was already picking up points in the 600cc championships at the Asian Road Racing Championship. And he won more international recognition when he was selected for the VR46 Rider Academy Master Camp training with the only, one and only Valentino Rossi. Then followed thrilling yet frustrating seasons at Asian and world level. Runner up at Super Sport 600 in the 2019 ARC and competing in 15 races Moto2. But what next? A split with the Moto2 team means that Kazma is at a big crossroads in his career. And he joins us here in the studio. Kazma, it's an exciting time that you've gone through. The Moto2 experience was great, but what is the future for you in 2021? My plans, 2021, yeah, this year I came back to Malaysian Cup Prix and Asian. But now I hope uh, in Malaysian Cup Prix, uh, my target is uh, I get a better result and uh, stay in the, in the good overall. Means the standings, uh, because uh, 2017 was uh, I'm champion for Malaysian Cup Prix and 2018 I was second at overall. And then now, and now when I come back, I, I hope I can back in the third overall in this. And for Asian and the, uh, the new new championship for me, because uh, I ride for 1,000 this year, and I hope also I can get a better result. We'll go back to uh, Capri just for now. It's not been the best start of the season for you, has it? A couple yes. Of, <laughs> couple of uh, a poor poor finishes. What what's going on there? <laughs> Uh, in first race, I crash. Uh, in second race, also I crash. I, I don't know how to say because it, this year maybe with our team is much, too much struggle on the bike because uh, they are in uh, new regulation. It's like the RPM, you know, fourteen thousand they cut, and then it's too much different with the two thousand seventeen when I ride this bike. No doubt you will, you, you will improve, I'm sure of that. Yeah, a question I, I have though, the difference between riding Capri, the small capacity engines, up to Superbike, they are completely different skills. Yes. How yes. do you cope with that variety? For me, it's 1000 to, to Capri, it's not too much, uh, it's different, but not too much uh, difficult for me because uh, I already have a basic for moped bikes, Capri, I mean. Uh, for Asia, 1000, yes, maybe difficult for me because the, this bike don't, don't have a tank and then go up to the, the, the tank bike, so it's difficult. But I need to adapt this because I choose this. So your association with Yamaha mm -hmm. uh, puts a little bit of expectation on you. I mean, the, the big manufacturers, they don't allow you to fail and Kazma Daniel is already a big name. Do, how do you cope with that pressure? Do you thrive on it or is it? mean a problem? Um, for me, I like uh, the pressure because uh, sometimes when I, I have a pressure, I don't make like uh, too much feel. It's like too much pressure. I just feel make it uh, calm down and just chill and uh, everything was going through and for me, it's not no, no, not no problem. <laughs> still a young lad, still a young lad. Listen, I tell you, one of one of the highlights of my uh, motor racing, short motor racing commentary career, was your battles with Adam Noradin, particularly in Zuhai, yes. where he beat you in race number one, <laughs> yeah. and you beat him in, in race number two. Is that usual, how you and Adam race? <laughs> yeah, because uh, I think that year I was with Adam, uh, was like from, 
uh, I think one year I with him and training a lot with him and uh, we we make a fun and fighting together when training also we also you know when I training with him I always touch him and he always touch me it's like this uh, because me and Adam it's like we, we like to fight but clean fight actually in training yes we don't have a clean fight <laughs> but in the race time we, we need to have a clean fight in race one I think I really want to win that race I really want to win because uh, we, uh, for the qualifying also I already make a pole position that times and then uh, I just make a, a small mistake in race one uh, I make a late breaking in last corner and then he just overtake me with the easy way so in race two I said Okay, now I don't I don't want to make this uh, this problem again. So I need to to make more calm and more more chill, and then I won the race. I remember at the time commentating on race one, and you were smiling after race one. You were laughing, and I was critical. <laughs> I was critical, saying surely he should be taking it more serious. Yeah. And then you made me shut up by winning race race <laughs> two. But is this smiley, happy, Kazma, your personality? Uh, my mind uh, always always uh, like make fun every time. This is Kasma. I like to make fun every time. Also, when I go to the serious level, like uh, GP, uh, if you ask them, I also they they say to you, I'm never back serious. <laughs> I always make fun, make jokes, and everything. Uh, this is Kasma. I I say to him, to them. For me, my style, I cannot. Serious. When I'm serious, I cannot cannot make a, a good result. So, how far in motor racing can you go? Can you con conquer Asia, conquer the world? For me, I hope uh, first now. I think I, I want to conquer the Asian, and then after, if I get a chance to go to the GP, and I will go to GP or World Superbike. I don't know, but. I want to, to, to go there because this is the, the last level for motorsport, you know? So a Malaysian with ambition to conquer Asia, then the world. The one and only Kazma Daniel Kazmayudin. Followers of road racing will be aware of the race in green and black colours adopted by a team who have made a massive impression on the sport in a short time. One XOX TKR SAG racing team competes at the Capri Malaysian National Championships, Asia Road Racing, FIM SCV Repsol and until last season Moto2. They dipped their toes into the racing market sponsoring the Capri from 2017 and something clearly worked as Horizons were expanded and for 2019 XOX joined forces with BMW added to the package for the first Asia Superbike Championships. Aslan Shah, Kamru Zaman winning that title. We're joined by team principal Bobby Farid Chamsudin to find out what exactly works so well for the company and plans for the season. Bobby, firstly, thanks for joining us on the programme. And uh, you had success. You've been involved, you've supported teams right the way through without getting success. How important was that Aslan Shah victory in the 2019 Superbikes Championship? Well, man, uh, uh, I cannot put it in, 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 in a proper word. When, when we won the championship in 2019, because it, it was, it was, it looked like it is so easy man, uh, to to the people. And it, it is our first experience in uh, ASB 1000 in Asian level, and we know the level of RCL racing is getting higher and higher. The competition, uh, oh man, is mad, man. We if, if you look at the races. And to win that in 2019 does bring another uh, uh, another thing to me that what what we can achieve in the future, and it's totally amazing. You brought some big international names to the Asian Road Racing Championship as, as well. Marcus Reiterberger was in your team for 2020. Can we expect more big names for the coming year? Uh, that's the thing. Uh, when when COVID-19 came to the world, and suddenly the landscape of the business changed. And um, a lot of things have to take into consideration and everything. And uh, it is hard for us to, to continue what we plan in the earlier stage of uh, uh, our plan with BMW, looking at the current situation and everything. And I, 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 I might say that this year uh, we will not bring any 
big name, but it will stop me to bring others in the future. Fantastic answer. But you're not just about the superbikes, it's not just the BMW connection. You've been very, very supportive of, of local race as well and, and very loyal to the likes of uh, Ramdan Rosli and, and Nazarul Izzat, who haven't got you great success, but they have been competitive. Is that part of the team plan? Yeah, of course. Uh, the the modus operandi of, of, of TKK racing team is about nurturing Malaysian talents. And uh, we know that the name that you have you have mentioned just now is uh, most of the one of the riders that we have in, in the market. Like Azan Shah has been so great for so many years with so many teams, win multiple championships. And we know that Ramdan Rosli has been with Petronas before uh, in, in CEV uh, championship. And um, if you want to talk about that, we have to talk all the way to Sharu Yuzi and Mark Daini. Uh, we are so impressed by this Malaysian rider who go to, 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 to a different level and everything. And we keep on trying, trying and trying and trying. And unfortunately, uh, it seems that there is, there is a loophole that, that I, 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 my perception is, is uh, something is missing uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a hierarchy of Malaysian rider from the Malaysian Championship to the World Championship level. Uh, that's why when I, I decided to compete in a team, I want to I want to have a different approach on how we do things, how we bring the riders up to the stairs and everything. And five of it, we have to be loyal to our our best rider in Malaysia, because that is the whole idea uh, to to bring Malaysian rider uh, to 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 the supreme in motorsports. You did indeed dip your toe into that world level last year. How different was it to racing at Asian level and Cub Pre level? Was it a completely different ball game, or did you feel comfortable in that company? The level of racing, I think, is 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 more on the chassis development, the engine power, and everything. But in terms of other things, uh, I think ASEAN racing now have become, I, for my view, is the second best uh, motorsport event in the world right now uh, because of uh, because of lots of things. And, and I am surprised how ASEAN Racing have, have moved uh, away from uh, uh, what we call last time in Malaysia is Race Kampung, uh, a village, village race. It's a small race and everything. So when I, I, when I enter ALC, it's a totally different thing. And I was so amazed that I don't, I don't need to go to Europe to, to have this kind of environment. And I totally love it. And the standard is, 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 is getting higher and higher. Uh, high praise indeed. Uh, can I ask what the company, I mean, you're, 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 you're more famous for the, the XOX Mobile. What does the company yeah. get out of this association? It's great for <laughs> racing. Well, how does the company benefit? Uh, it's, 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 it, is, it is strange because uh, uh, our business is totally in, 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 in Malaysia. We don't go overseas and everything. And uh, as, as, as XOX, this is uh, what we call uh, our, our effort to help motorsport in Malaysia. It's more to that. So people will see the value on it. Why XOX Mobile support this motorsport event and everything? Because we want to help lots of people in the industry. The industry have to grow and the industry have to have support. Uh, from all the conglomerates, all the business and everything. Despite that, uh, we do get a lot of uh, attention from Asian country. Uh, that's good for business and everything. Uh, we start talking to neighbors uh, like Indonesia, Thailand and everything of possibility of open up our business there. And it does work, actually. It, it's amazing, man. Uh, for me, our, our investment in, in, in motorsport, especially in Malaysia Capri and Asia Pro Racing, have worked tremendously for the company. So, as a business partnership, it works for XOX. Uh, back on the track, Bobby, what are we okay. seriously expecting from your, your riders in all categories at Asia road racing level? Again, this year, we, we, we have to uh, think about our win in 2019, how we want to retain. That is a problem again for if you win a championship and then you have to retain the championship and then obviously we're going to work harder and harder and we have a very good preparation of the bike uh, uh, with Aslan and uh, I'm going to tell you another rider going to be Ramdan Rosli will be uh, alongside with uh, Aslan Shah in 1000cc and we, we are confident that we're going to retain our championship this year again. Um, and uh, on, on 600 CC will be a step up for us, uh, and whereby we're gonna work with Alpha Racing. Uh, the guys will help us on the techno new technology on the bike and everything to get our bike uh, comparable to other teams and everything. 
And uh, with 250, we are the best Yamaha team in 2019. Uh, with Rui Latipuri, Muzake, uh, last uh, in 2019. And again, they will be uh, uh, competing with us this year um, with the same bike. And obviously, in Underbull, we want to retain our uh, championship as a team overall champion in 2019 with a new lineup. And we will see after the, after the schedule is up in the market. Aslan, I know yesterday you told me all you want to do is enjoy, finish the race, don't crash, but it is all on the line today and you are being placed in a must-win situation. Yeah, it's an uh, incredible uh, situation, you know, because uh, I'm very lucky for what happened yesterday. And, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's crazy. It's, it's difficult to describe on, on, uh, on the word, but anyway, today, it's a last round and I just wish that I, I do my best and uh, try to grab the championship. It's the start can be a useful indicator of how things are going. Somebody's got a problem at the back. We are actually... We're away. I'm not sure that was uh, TJ Alberto with that problem at the back, but uh, Brock Parks with a much better start today. Where's Aslan Shah? Where? Aslan Shah is second. He's gone through him. Oh, Aslan Shah, he's right up the sharp end. Absolutely. He's done brilliantly. Got off brilliantly. And uh, Zach Wanzaini, happy what Bike 24 has been dragged along. I'm looking for the number 23 of Brock Parks. Fourth. He's there, tucked in nicely in that little group. Oh, he's just got, uh, he's just run wide and got passed by another couple of people. So Aslan Shah has uh, read this uh, start beautifully and got a brilliant start. Brock, once again, just uh, struggles a little bit off the start line here. Well, he is away down and he's gone wide there. One, two, three, four, five, sixth place for Brock Parks. Aslan Shah Kamruzaman has made a great start. There's a long way to go, but if you get off to a good start, it can propel you onto special things. He looked relaxed on the po uh, on the um, grid. He looked relaxed beforehand when we had a chance to speak to him. And here he's looking very relaxed in P1. Good move by Brock Parks there. He but that gap is, uh, and look at, uh, oh, up the inside he goes. Boy, as they head back down that straight, Brock Parks has uh, taken one, but his Yamaha compatriots aren't helping him out too much there, Des. No, they're not really. <laughs> 24, Happy Watt, he's got Parks right, wow, look at the lead that Aslan Shah has got. Sandy's oh. there, there was a moment for Zach Wan. He's able to hold on, but Sandy tries to go through the inside. Aslan Shah is in the distance. He's halfway to Bangkok. 36-2, uh, 36-3 last time round for him. He's a second to lap quicker than everybody. This is a race that Aslan Shah has taken by the scruff of the neck. Aslan Shah, 36-1, last time round, fastest lap of the race. Next, uh, Federico Sandy did a 37-2. So, I mean, that just shows you 1.1 seconds a lap quicker than second place. Parks, 4.6 seconds down on his main rival for the championship. Aslan Shah Kamruzaman is in a fantastic position. Zakwan has overtaken Federico Sandy. Apiwat has got Brock Parks right on his tail. Parks must just believe and lap consistently and make slow but sure uh, dents into that lead for Aslan Shah. And look at the lead he's got. Wow, he is loving this and he's done this from very early on, Aslan Shah, Kamru Zaman. He looks to be riding pretty smoothly as well, which isn't something you can always say about him, but that's a nervous look over the shoulder. And uh, the boss of one XOX looks on, he's not counting his chickens. Well, you cannot count your chickens before they're hatched, especially in this. You never know what might happen. You might pick up a punch, you might have a mechanical failure. We've seen that happen today in different classes across the field. But one thing we oh, know... Oh, Pox has gone wide! Pox has had a real problem. He is forced way, way wide. And that, surely, Steve Martin, is it for Aslan Shah. 
as we come into the final lap of the season of the 2019 ARC Superbikes Championship. And it will be a lap of honor for Aslan Shah Kamrazaman, the veteran Malaysian. We've known about him in Asia for so long. He has lifted so many crowns, but this will be probably the best come from behind victory of his career. Yeah, unbelievable to see him display. What a display. He nearly won the 600 class last year, riding for Kawasaki. Was unsure where he would be this year, but he made his way into this uh, 1XOX team. And I tell you what, since the start of the season, he has been on fire. Aslan Shah Kamruzaman comes through and will pick up his sixth victory in 14 races. It will be three wins in the last four, five consecutive podiums, and the champion of Superbikes ARRC 2019, Aslan Shah Kamruzaman. What a display. That was brilliant stuff by Aslan Shah. If I had a hat on, I'd take it off. What a relief uh, uh, after the seventh round when Aslan won this race and I, my reaction was like, uh, this is unbelievable. And But to look at the effort that the team have taken, the mechanic, uh, the rider, especially Aslan, on this win is, we, we expect this from, 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 from the first race we enter the first round until we know that we're going to win it. But until until the seventh round, when it is it is it is confirmed that we are we are we win this and everything is totally unbelievable, and all the credit to Aslan Shah, uh, to uh, Raja Zaini, and by my side, uh, the mechanics, uh, our Malaysian boys with Alpha Racing, and um, it was it was it was hard work. Uh, it was a lot of a uh, lot of fighting among us, a lot of shouting. And we've done it, and in our first try, it is amazing, man. And we love it. We love to do that again uh, this year. And see you guys on the on, on, on this year's race. With the way the situation of racing at this moment, everything is open up for debate, and everyone is questioning every single decision made. The Idometsu Inquest this week takes us to Japan where the All Japan Championship got underway. We'll be reviewing in, uh, what happened in Qatar in MotoGP, Moto2 or Moto3 and also Capri. Ron Hogg, the promotions director for uh, TWMR is alongside with us. And let's start in Japan, Ron, where the All Japan Championship got underway and the JSL 1000, which is their marquee, uh, was rather spoiled by wet weather. There was a double victory uh, for Nakasuga. He won race one, but in race two, it, it, it finished two laps early. It seemed to me that he called the race rather than race control. <clears throat> I think it's always a difficult situation when it comes to wet weather races. And obviously, the safety of the race is very, very important. And riders would know immediately in that sense if the track is wet and when they're running slicks. So it used to be a situation where uh, riders used to raise their hands up and then race control would make a decision and stuff like that. But in this current case, it, it appeared as though the decision was made only after Nakasuka had raised his hand. So I personally think um, it's a difficult decision to call 
but something that's called based on safety and something that we probably need to sell. Yeah, nonetheless, it was a, a win double for Nakasuga, rather more convincing. Starting from the pit lane in the Superstock 1000, Takahashi went on to win from the pit lane. Uh, Yuki is an excellent rider. I mean, he's obviously a rider that's coming from uh, a rich heritage. He's been in MotoGP, he's everywhere, and um, he won last year's championship. I think again it was a sort of a scenario between dry track, wet track and he decided to go with slicks and I think a large number of the riders were on wet tyres. This allowed him to, after two or three laps, to carve the entire field literally and win the race and again it comes with experience and I think Yuki obviously called it right. Terrific performance by Takashi, another terrific performance from a, an old friend of ours at Asia Road Racing Championship, uh, Tomoyoshi Koyama, started on the front row in the Supersport 600, finished as a clear winner, led from start to finish. I think Koyama is uh, it's a very big, big race for him. He actually developed the new CBR 600 and this was their first race. And I think he's very happy with the performance of the bike. Uh, he, he won the championship maybe two years ago, but lost it last year, saying that the old bike was not competitive enough. Um, with the new bike, obviously, there's not so much changes to the engine, but the electronic management system, the feeling of the bike and everything. And Koyama is again a rider with plenty of experience, so good for him. And let's see how this develops for the rest of the season. Next on to MotoGP activities, they stayed in Qatar for round two of the MotoGP circus. Our focus is on uh, Moto2 initially, but not the best day at the office once again for Hafiz Shahin or Somkia, 19th and 21st wrong. What's going on? Um, yes, I think results that I think nobody wants to see, but if we compare to round one results, uh, both of them had a DNF. So they've stayed on to finish the race and get more data, which I think is very, very important. Uh, I think with uh, Hafiz, as we mentioned, new team, new chassis, uh, it will, he needs probably a little bit uh, more riding on the bike, more experience to perform. But I'm sure he's not happy with himself as well, and we, we hope that he will be in the point soon. By contrast, Ayagora, fifth place. I mean, what a transition he's made from Moto3 into Moto2. He wasn't in contention for a podium, but he, he rode superbly well. Well, with Ayagura, I mean, he's coming from fighting from Moto3 Championship in 2020, and um, he's obviously bringing that, that swagger and confidence with him, you know, to show that he is a competitor in Moto2. Uh, he was there or thereabouts on the outside of the points in the first race. You know, but you know, uh, starting from the second round, from the first practice, he was always in the top 10, top 10, showing his consistency. So, uh, you know, I think he will be a strong contender. You know, still a rookie, obviously, the first three guys have way more experience than him, but someone to watch out for. In Moto3, another good performance from Toda, picked up points. He was a, a fifth on this occasion, I think it was eighth on uh, the first Grand Prix. He's fitted nicely into Moto3? Yeah, I think so. I think he, he's enjoying sort of a breath of new life with this new team. Um, he always performs well in Qatar. He was pole a couple of years back and um, I think in round one he was also quite fast but didn't get the results. This time around fifth, so hopefully, you know, he's, he's no longer a new kid on the block. He's got a couple of years riding in Moto3. And again, to win the championship or be in the championship, you need to be doing this every single race. And that's something what we need to about to do. But no points for Andy Gilang, the Indonesian, in the 20s. Finish the race. You always learn when you finish a race, but not affecting the scoreboard. Um, I think with Andy, it's his second race only in Moto3. So the critics will be out to criticize him. Um, he needs more time. Uh, from the first race reviews or reports that I've read about Andy is that he was still riding a lot like he was riding in Moto2 and obviously Moto3 is a smaller bike and uh, you need to move much much faster and this race apparently he had problems with tyres you know wrong selection of tyres again uh, I, I personally think he will be strong in Moto3 
better than Moto3 than in Moto2. So I'll give him a couple of races and then then let the access wheel in that sense. Brief mention of the Idometsu Asia Talent Cup, which also took place in Qatar. Uh, there's a, a runaway leader, Ron Hogg, in that uh, there was a Fulisato double again, four wins out of four. But he was pushed all the way by Malaysia's Daniel Sharrell, who picked up two second places. Yeah, I think uh, good performance by Daniel Shami improved a lot from the first race to now and finished second both time, really close with uh, Furasato would give him confidence moving forward for the rest of the season. Um, he's got to have that consistency now to push Fusato all the way because obviously th that two look a uh, leak above the rest at this moment. So the championship is going to be at this moment sort of in between these two guys. And with the rest of them, you know, I think Hakim did uh, third, which I think is excellent. So again, in the championship, it's all about consistency. And let's see where they end in the end of the season. But the Indonesian races, once again, no points for either Azar or Fadila. So again, I think it's all about experience. I talked about this last time around, saying about experience and not having any competition over the last one year. So they probably need much more mileage and to control their emotions during the race because the lap times are all about that. You know? So it's important to finish the race first and sometimes emotions get the better of you and silly mistakes happen. Round two of the Malaysian Cup 3 took place at the Sepang North Circuit and it was a quite competitive Ron Hogg. I believe the, the stewards have been debating and talking and being heavily involved, particularly in the 150cc, which was won by Nigel Izzat. It's wide open and Cup 3 has the, has the potential to be elbows and very physical. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of debate. It was a very hard race, you know. Um, very close one as well and I'll be honest to say that it was very very competitive anybody could have won in that sense and so when the racing gets competitive sometimes you see riders reflex actions and uh, with intention or without intention is something for the race direction and stewards to decide uh, but I think the, the, with the way the situation of racing at this moment everything is open up for debate and everyone is questioning every single decision made. So it's not an easy job to do, but I think um, we hope with the improvement and experience, they, they come up with the right decisions. As for the 125cc, Adi Brosley is a name who has long been part of the Capri uh, circuit and he picked up a good win in the 125. He's always going to be competitive, no matter the circuit. Yeah, I think Adib is one of the most experienced riders in the 125 class, uh, finished second overall last year. Uh, looks very strong at this moment, uh, won the race. Again, a very tight race, anybody could have won that race as well. But again, as I've mentioned before, in the smaller capacity classes, the riders, you know, you see a whole group of them there, but it's finally the familiar name that always ends up picking up the checkered flag. So, his experience stole and he won the race. Our thanks to Ron Hogg, and you have been watching the Idemetsu Inquest. We've got a ding-dong classic race for you after the break as Kazma Daniel goes wheel to wheel with Adam Noradin. This is racing of the highest quality.
looking uh, relaxed and happy. He's pole position. He always looks relaxed and happy. And uh, it was very interesting that he was very relaxed and happy having lost that battle with Adam Norodin. And while Svenny is saying it's very sporting, a couple of other comments are being, hey, he shouldn't be happy to come second in a battle like that. When they disappear, we will be underway. Pinapong Boonla gets off to a, a solid start. Not so good for Ramdan Rosley to the left of this um, view as we look. Ramdan bike number 23 has dropped four of five places from that start. And it's Pinapong Boonla to Kasper Daniel who will be leading. 1-2 into that first circuit, and there looks to be a problem for Ramdan Rosley right from the very start there by Barry Russell. Oh, that's miserable. Yeah, I think you're right, Des. Oh, that's so disappointing. And also going out wide, that was Pinapong Boonlert. Now that makes it very interesting. No, it, uh, indeed, Pinapong, he's dropped off away, and Kasma Daniel has got open track ahead of him. Behind him, there's a little whittle from Azroy Hakim Umar, but what a fascinating opening. Three or four uh, corners, and there is the problem for Ramdan Rosli. Yeah, let's see what his problem is at the moment. But, uh, there goes Kasma, and he's being chased by Azroy and Pirapong. He's going to make up some ground now, so worth keeping an eye on him. Adam Norodin in third place. We know to keep an eye on him. We've learned from experience that Adam Norodin will be mighty competitive, but Kazma Daniel, quickest in qualifying, perhaps hurt by the fact that he didn't win a race. He really should have won. He leads Adam Norodin, goes into second place. Already we're beginning to see these two who dueled so famously in race one in Zuha yesterday, potentially going to be dueling in race two. And this is only the first lap of 12. That was then. This is now away from a, a very happy pick crew at the moment because Kazma Daniel and Adam Norodin haven't really changed much the differential between them. It's 0.466, so Kazma is riding competitively. I, I wonder, despite the smiles, how how badly he took yesterday's defeat. Uh, let's see what he can do with Kazma, who's uh, very much had his tail up for the last few weeks since taking a second place in the CEV Junior World Championship, Moto2. Asma Daniel, his last five races at the Supersport 600, fourth, third, second, third, second. Is he able to put a first on that mantelpiece? It looks so much better when it says P1 rather than P2 or P3, but he's under pressure. Is Kazma Daniel raises the head up high? Boonler goes on the inside. Peter Pong Boonler takes the lead with a fabulous overtaking maneuver. And Kazma Daniel, who'd been serenely in front, more than a second ahead of Peter Pong Boonler, is suddenly chasing the ties by a ties back wheel. Yeah, Pirapong's been lapping in the uh, late 137s. He's the only rider on track to have uh, dipped below 138. And now, let's see what uh, what he can do with these uh, two very talented ch challengers behind him, Kazma Daniel and yesterday's race winner, Adam Norodin. After this, it'll be two laps to go, and the lead for Pirapong Boonle as they go past. 0.325.06 ahead of Adam Norodin. What a finale we've got again from these three riders. Norodin goes into P2. Yeah, you saw his uh, team manager, Zulfami Karadin, on the pit wall there, waving at his rider, hurrying him along, and uh, he got the message that uh, Pirapong's gone back in front. So Adam Norodin, P2, and then Kazma goes on the inside. I promise you that this would be a genuine duel. Kazma Daniel, he's got Pitapong in his sights, but Adam norodin has got Kazma and Pitapong in their sights as they slide into the corner. Tight, tight angles, and it's Pitapong who leads, uses the full width of the track just to make sure that there's no space for Kazma to get by. In the meantime, Adam Norodin has already shown that he's got the ability at the end of the, the big straight to get ahead. Kazma has a look on the inside. Kazma takes the space from Pinapong Boulet. Pinapong tries to go around the outside. Adam Norodin also has a look as well. Third change of lead in this lap alone. Kazma Daniel is the man who's holding on. Has he got the ability and the determination? Whiplashes around this corner and will use this as a rehearsal coming into the final lap. It is Kazma Daniel leading from Pinapong from Adam Norodin. He got fantastic drive through that last turn. Uh, Pirapong slipstreamed up close to him, as has done Adam Norodin, who goes through to second.
Adam Norodin P2. He knows where to make his manoeuvre. And Pitapong, who was leading, now back into P3. Incredible stuff. Final lap. Riders giving their all, lifting the brakes until the very, very last minute. A little whip turn as Pitapong goes on a different line. Tries to get something different on Adam Norodin. But Adam Norodin trails behind Kazma Daniel. It's all coming good. Adam Norodin looks on the inside and Pitapong is still there. Oh, there's we uh, we said if this race is one eighth as good as yesterday's, it's going to be a cracker. And my goodness, this is every bit as good as yesterday's. Three still in with a genuine chance of making this. These are the three podium sitters. Pitapong, the championship leader, has to do something special though, because he's got Noradin and Kazma Daniel ahead of him. Noradin will be looking at Kazma Daniel and looking for an error. Goes on the outside. Noradin looks on the inside. Kazma Daniel is beaten on the inside. Can't hold it. Kazma round the outside. Pitapong has a look as well, but it's Adam Noradin who takes Kazma on the last lap once again. Adam Norodin won yesterday. Kazma doesn't want to give it up. Final corner. Kazma and Norodin. Kazma Daniel goes wide. Kazma Daniel this time holds on for the victory again of Norodin. And the celebrations will be long and they will be loud and they will be thoroughly deserved. Well, in the race one, uh, I feel uh, just a little, little bit disappointed. Uh, I don't. I don't feel uh, disappointed too much because uh, Adam is, uh, is, is my sparring uh, and that time also I really good friendship with Adam so I don't feel like too much uh, disappointed and, and after in race 2 I feel I, I really want to race that time because uh, Adam already win in, uh, in race 1 and I think that the first time he win for six super, uh, super Sport 600, and then I need to win back. I don't want to give him uh, for his first win, so I need. I also want to the first win uh, for for our teams. And then that time I beat him, and I feel like ah, now you get it. Ten questions with Kazma Daniel Mayudin. Kazma, when did you first start racing? Um, I start. I race the bike, I think in 2008. What is your pocket bike? favorite racing memory so far? My favorite uh, racing in 2015, I think, yes, 2015, when I started a uh, champion with uh, Caprix in Caprix City 115. What is your least favorite, your worst memory so far? Uh, I think last year. Last year, uh, when I want to start the career uh, in uh, IRTA test, I crash and then I get just a... Broken bone? Yeah, broken... Uh, no, it's not broken. It's like my, my, my skin was like, put out like this. So. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any superstitions before you go out riding? No. Okay. Do you have a favourite track? Uh, yes, I have a favorite track. Uh, I think my favorite track uh, is not only one. I think uh, too much. I think one. Uh, I think three. Which More are three, they? Uh, first, uh, especially uh, firstly is uh, Sepang. Second is uh, Qatar, and third is uh, Zuhai. <laughs> Do you have a favorite racing ride? Yes, uh, I I like uh, 2018 was Adam Nuruddin. Again, great answer. What is your favorite food? Uh, anything, uh, anything is uh, what is my mom's cook. <laughs> good mother's boy. <laughs> okay, uh, besides racing, are you good at any other sport? Yes, I, I, I can play badminton and, and taco, but the football, soccer, not too much. <laughs> Taco's a good choice. Yes. Final question. In three words, when your career is over, how would you like Kazma Daniel to be remembered? First champion, second champion, and the third one is my style. Champion, champion, my style, the one and only Kazma Daniel. Next week, we start our countdown to the Asian Road Racing Championship season, which is now less than two months away. Tick tock. The countdown is on.